Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, it's the first time you're visiting. Please like, subscribe and share if you like what I talk about. For those of you who've already subscribed, I just want to thank you. Anyway, I wanted to talk about statelessness. I came across a video this morning and it was talking about this new update to statelessness, which came out in April 2019. Now, for those of you who do not know what statelessness is, it's where you do not belong to any national, any country. And what's happened by the immigration rules, the British immigration rules, is that a lot of children have been made stateless whether it's because their parents have not registered them or their parents were not of this country or whatever the reason. Anyway, about a month ago, I received a video from Rorpa Kropa. Well, I watched one of his videos and it was about a young man who was in Jamaica. He had been sent to Jamaica by his parents and dumped with, she wasn't even a relative, she was a, a mutual friend. So they dumped her, their son on this lady. Now they, ha and they gave her his birth certificate to show that he was born in Hackney in the UK. And now they've disappeared. They've never been in touch. Now, to me, this is a class example of someone who is stateless because he cannot get no recognition in Jamaica. He cannot get no ID because he wasn't born in Jamaica. And because England, because of their immigration rules, which state that you have to be in the country for a certain amount of years, um, you, well, if you're born in the country, you have to have stayed in the country for a certain amount of years, otherwise you cannot get citizenship. So therefore, because this man has been dumped in Jamaica and has not lived in UK for the requisite period, he is therefore stateless and he should therefore be able to apply for statelessness. So the only thing is, is that the money factor. Because statelessness will give him five years in the country and then he can apply for indefinite leave to remain. The, the Home Office are obliged to reduce the fees for statelessness, for stateless applications. I don't know how much, but the fact of the matter is that the person is meant to apply um, for registration and be denied. Now, I don't see why a person should have to apply and pay that registration fee of nearly a thousand pounds and then be denied if it is clear in the in the immigration rules that you have to have lived in the country. That itself is evidence that that person does not qualify for British citizenship and is therefore stateless. So I don't know why they have to try and get more money as usual out of the poor and the vulnerable. And I'm not being funny, but those people don't look like they've got £1,000 to waste on a registration for a child that's not even related to them. So anyway, I'm going to show you the video and then I'm just going to read um, a few little facts. And um, yeah. All right, this is a, a different case that I've never dealt with before. This is an international case. Miss Marcy, I want you to tell the people what you just told me. Okay. Nicholas, she's searching for Nicholas, mother. I have Nicholas birth paper here, I don't want to show too much because this is a British government paper. Nicholas was born in England and Nicholas' mother is Carleen Angela Morris, M-O-R-A-I-S. And Nicholas' mother, talk about what happened. Yeah, I come. When she used to come, she wanted to sell. Yeah. Nice with me. And they used to sell downtown. Yeah. Down. Yes. So she want me never see her for a long time. Yes. I think she, she come to look for me one time again and she can't come give me and give me the age. In very few From that, I mean, That was how long ago? From 1999. From 1999, Nicholas. From mother, Carleen Angela Morris, and Nicholas has a British birth paper, and this lady is asking me, she says she wants this child to go back to him, Birdland, because he was born in England. I don't know if the British High Commission can help him. His father's name, what's his father's name? Now, I'm stopping it there because I did give some wrong information in an earlier video. I was saying that he didn't have any rights 
to be a British citizen because he had been out of the country. But I never realised that he could qualify under statelessness. So I just wanted to put that in there. Father is Tar is Nicholas Morris Tar, and he was born in the or in Nicholas Morris Tar. The father is supposed to be on it. Father, no father, no father. Oh, K Morris, that is oh Tar A K Morris Tar. That is a father name, and the British High Commission that's supposed to can deal with this. If anybody from the British High Commission is listening. And what, anybody have a contact number? You, know, you want to give me the contact number? Ask yeah, here. You want to give me the You want to um, ask here, you don't want to uh, here. From the big British High Commission, they can contact me to add this young man. He's, um, he's been here from, he was what? Uh, from 1980, 1998. This is a case for the British yeah, High Commission. 1999, 1999. Yeah, 1911 of December, 1998. Nobody can look at this. And this is his birthday, but he's searching for his mother, and he would like, you don't want to find your mother. I find his father. You want to find him father and his mother. Anybody knows. Any one of them, you want to go back to England because in his ear, he said he's a British citizen by birth. And all yeah, that you know, ID if you can't get nothing to him, you cannot have an ID, you cannot have nothing at all because you're born in England. So I would suggest that you take this to the British High Commission and let them contact you because he's going to need, they're going to need to find the mother and the father. If they are listening to this and anybody know, Carleen Angela Murphy was born in Hackney, London Borough of Hackney, and he was born at the Omerton Hospital in 1998. <laughs> And his mother was a social worker, and um, Carly, yeah, she was known. Carly, what occupation to say? Market trader and what? Etrick House, Rosdale Street, E5. This child is a British, and he's trying to find mother and father. Oh, can parents, both parents bring a baby that was born overseas, and leave them and go, and you are told. You know, you're not related. They don't know, I should just leave the baby friend. Yeah, so I think you get the background for those of you who can't, who don't understand the Jamaican lingo. Um, a mother and a father took the child to Jamaica. Um, she's not related. She's just a family member, not a family member. She's just a friend, she said. And um, they just dumped him there. And that was like from 1999. So what they're trying to do is fight, see if they can get him back to England because he can't get no papers, he can't get no work, he can't do anything in Jamaica because he's not a Jamaican. So he can't get no ID card, he's just in limbo. Um, I'm not quite sure why the boy never spoke up for himself, but providing he's got no criminal record, he should be entitled to come over to the UK and apply for statelessness. I was even thinking whether or not a GoFundMe could be set up that's linked direct to the Home Office so that people don't get tempted to dip into the funds, whereby he could um, apply for citizenship because that's what they're saying they should do, even though it's apparent that he does not qualify. But it's another way for them to get money as usual. But every mickle make a muckle. And if everybody put a pound or two pound, it's not really, they're not going to really feel it. So I was thinking about something like that to help this young man. But having said that, um, I'm not quite sure whether or not... I don't know if the points-based system will apply because, you know, Boris Johnson now, he's come um, in with this points-based system for every immigrant. Technically, until he is recognised as a stateless, he's going to be recognised as an immigrant. I'm not quite sure what England has to offer somebody... Um, like him. I don't know what his qualifications are. I don't know where he would live. What would he do if he don't know? He doesn't know who his parents are. Even if he came back to England, what do they expect the state to do with him? Are they going to put him in a home? He's too old to be in a home. He's 19, I think. So where would he live? Who would look after him if he doesn't know his family? You know, it's, it's not that straightforward. It's fine saying 
you're British and you're a British citizen, but you'd have to have a plan in place so that when you do come over, you know what you're doing and you're not going to be an encumbrance on the state because that's what they're trying to avoid. So if he's got a plan, um, then all well and good, I would suggest that he applies for um, statelessness. Anyway, um, let me just give you a few little definitions. Um, a stateless person, as defined by the 1954 Convention relating to the status of stateless persons, is a person who is not considered as a national by any state under the operation of its law. And I believe that young man would qualify. You can be made stateless if your parents did not register you and you don't have a passport, or if your parents have died and moved, you've got no evidence apart from the fact that you have your British passport. I'm talking in relation to this young man in this video. Um, you can be made stateless if your parents did not register you because they were illegal in the country, but you were born here and have lived here all your life. Um, but in the say at the same token, even if you haven't been, even if you haven't lived here, by the law, that gentleman in Jamaica is stateless because he's lost his. Uh, he hasn't got no Jamaican citizenship, and he's lost his British citizenship by not living in the country. The parents have deprived that, him of that. They, they're not around and they haven't secured his future. They might have thought bringing him up in Jamaica maybe 19 years ago was a better life for him. But now it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be that way. Um, so he's got his birth certificate. And I mean, the new case law as of, 90, as of April this year, he should, he should be entitled. 2013, UK introduced a procedure through which people could be recognised as stateless and be granted the right to remain in the UK because of their statelessness. There's been an incredibly low rate of success. As of 2016, only 39 applications had been granted in three years. 39. No legal aid, but you may be able to apply for exceptional case funding, which means a legal aid lawyer can take on your case. But don't ask me about that. I have no idea you're going to have to put exceptional case funding in your Google search and do that homework yourself. Um, so what else have I got here? Um, so this application needs to prove that you were not registered in the UK but were born here. You don't have a passport. You've tried to get a passport but have been denied. The thing is with that is that, once again, trying to get a passport... Um, if he's in Jamaica, how would he do that? Would he do that locally through his um, Jamaican um, commissioner for Britain? Maybe he needs to do that. And then when that's denied, then he can apply for statelessness. Uh, it will be denied. There's no doubt about it. But if it's not, then fine. He can come over. But if it is denied... I'm not quite sure. Um, yes, yeah, so statelessness provides five years in the country, um, five years residence as a stateless person, and then you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. That applies for a stateless child. I'm not quite sure. I would assume the same thing applies to an adult. Um, Yeah, from April the 6th of April 2019, applications will need to have stateless leave for five years before being eligible for indefinite leave to remain. So once you're stateless and you've been stateless for five years, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. But they're assuming that you're in the UK. But like I said, I'm sure that that man qualifies. That's all I wanted to say for now. Bye bye. I hope this is helpful.